So I was just taking a look at these three beautiful chronograph movements, and it's really easy to get lost in a chronograph. They're so complicated, there's so much depth to them, but if you really think about the most basic thing that's happening, you are starting and stopping the seconds hand. And that's done by engaging the intermediate chronograph wheel with the center chronograph wheel. And the way that that engagement happens determines how precise the measurement of time is. So the longa does it kind of in the most traditional way. It has an intermediate chronograph wheel with large teeth, and the center chronograph wheel has very, very fine teeth. And what that does is it allows for a quick and easy engagement between the two wheels and gets the seconds hand started in a very smooth fashion. So if these are the two gears that are meshing, we have the intermediate chronograph wheel and the center chronograph wheel. When they mesh, they're gonna to come together and the intermediate chronograph wheel is going to drive the center chronograph wheel. So that's a smooth mesh right there. But what happens if one of those wheels is slightly off and when they come together, when you press the start stop button, what if the teeth impact? So there's a slight movement there of the seconds hand because of that. And so that's the basic problem that we're trying to address with all of these movements. Now, if we move on to the Vacheron Constantine chronograph movement, they have a different take on overcoming the issue of engagement between the intermediate and center chronograph wheels. What they've done is they've mounted coaxially a steel wheel directly below the intermediate chronograph wheel. That steel wheel has very fine teeth and it meshes very precisely with the center chronograph wheel. I guess theoretically, if you were to leave the Vacheron Constantine chronograph movement running for perpetuity, it would probably last longer than these other two movements because it has a steel intermediate wheel. We can move on to the Patek chronograph movement here. They have a similar approach to the Longue. They have a brass intermediate chronograph wheel meshing with the center wheel. And what they've done is developed a very unique tooth profile to the intermediate wheel. And it's done to promote engagement. It's done to promote a smooth transmission of power. And it's also something very interesting to see. The one that really appeals to me the most from a technical perspective is the Vacheron Constantine. The solution that they've come up with with this coaxial steel wheel is pretty cool. And beyond that, a mono pusher chronograph is technically a lot more difficult to, to put together and to get working well. With that being said, the pusher on this Vacheron Constantine is not working too well right now. When you start and stop it, it's definitely much stiffer than the Longue and the Patek, but it's one of those things that can be adjusted, that can be fixed. So I'm confident that eventually we'll see the pusher mechanism on the Vacheron Constantine working in a much more smooth manner. But yeah, if, if I were to look at all three of these movements, just from a technical perspective, the Vacheron Constantine is what really jumps out at me.